So before getting to the title of the video, I need to explain some language learning theory to begin with so you can understand why this approach is effective. Basically, language is just a way of breaking down the world into a set of concepts. So we have the world over here in this big circle, and we have language A, English, for example, in blue circles, and we have language B, Japanese, in red circles. And these could be any other languages. And basically in language A, we have broken down the world into these like overlapping set of circles. Some of them overlap quite well, some of them overlap not as much, and they're quite discrete. And in language B, we've also done something quite similar in another segment of the circle. Now the thing is when you're translating between languages, like you're usually losing some kind of nuance between the languages. Words don't have a one-to-one -one mapping between different languages. Some of them can, for example, like scientific words such as hydrogen in English, is equivalent to hydrogen in Japanese, but thousands of words don't have any direct translation between two languages. When you're watching a drama, for example, which is dubbed in a different language, they're not saying the translation of what they said in the previous language, they're saying like basically what a native speaker of the new language would have said in the same situation. So if you're watching an anime but it's in English, then they're basically saying what an English speaker would have said if they found themselves in the same situation, rather than a direct translation, because a direct translation loses a lot of nuance and it doesn't sound natural. So yeah, in this case over here we have two circles, and this could be like a scientific term, and they overlap or they almost have a one-to-one -one meaning between two languages. We have another term which kind of means the same thing, they overlap a tiny bit, but they don't overlap completely. And we have another concept where in Japanese we might have a word that encapsulates one idea, and then in English we might have five words for that same idea, each which has its own nuance and meaning, which is why in some cases you can't have a direct translation without explaining the nuance and meaning. So what this ultimately means is that when you're learning a language, whether that's English, Japanese, Chinese, or any other language, you want to be learning that language within the language itself. You don't want to be learning translations, you want to be learning the definitional words in the language itself. And as a brief aside, if you're interested in more of what I just said, and you want to learn a more language learning theory to make sure you can get to a really high level in a language, I would recommend checking out Matt vs Japan's Immersion Dojo, because he explains a lot of language learning theory with a big picture overview and the finer details about what you should be doing on a practical basis to get to a high level in another language. There's a link down below to join it and I would highly recommend it because I personally got a lot of value out of it. And where AI comes into this is that ChatGPT and other LLMs are really good at explaining different concepts to you in a variety of different languages. So what I did is I made my own Anki add-on which explains words of a language using simpler words within the same language. And Anki is a really powerful software that helps you memorize a lot of information, which can include thousands or tens of thousands of words of a different language. And I have a previous video about it, which you can watch and it's linked somewhere but right now. And you can go to tools and you can see the add-on in Anki, you can download it in the description down below. And it's called GPT Language Explainer Settings. So you can go over here and you can see it uses OpenAI, so it uses the OpenAI API key. I have a full video which breaks down how to use the add-on. But the main thing is I have a prompt which says, please write a short explanation of the word, word, in the context of the original sentence, sentence. The definition is a definition, write an explanation that helps the Japanese beginner understand the word and how it's used in the context as an example. Explain it the same way a native would explain it to a child, don't use any English, only use simpler Japanese. And then it has some more settings for Japanese itself. And if you're using Japanese, or uh, then you want to be using the engine for text-to-speech engine as VoiceVox. And you need to have VoiceVox installed, and there's a, a good page where you can go to install it from. And it's text-to-speech for Japanese in particular. But if you're learning a different language, you might want to use OpenAI's uh, or 11 Labs text-to-speech instead. So basically the way this works is I'm going to go and find a word that I don't know. And I have a video over here which I'm watching, and it explains, uh, it's like, 50 to 80 year olds give advice to their younger selves. And there's a word that I want to learn or a phrase that I want to learn over here. And when I hover over it, I have this extension that shows the definition of the word in Japanese, and then it shows some English as well. And you can see in Japanese, it only has one definition, but in English, it has like six, seven translations, which is why you don't want to be learning translations, you want to be learning definitions of the word in the language itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press add over here, and then it's gonna add that to Anki, and then I'm gonna press this uh, added note button over here and open up Anki and then it shows the sentence that I just added. But this sentence is not particularly good, it's not particularly like complete um, because it's cut off. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna to go to uh, a website called Immersion Kit. I'm gonna search the uh, phrase in particular and then I'm gonna find a good sentence. And this sentence seems quite good, it's from an anime RE0. And then I'm gonna paste the sentence in the sentence area over here and then press copy audio URL, paste the sentence audio in here, and then the And that was the audio for the sentence, and I'm just gonna paste a picture in as well. 
And now the way to use this extension is you can go to edit and then press batch generate GPT explanations. And since I'm using Japanese and I'm using VoiceVox, I need to have VoiceVox installed and running in the background um, because that's well used for text to speech. So if I go to edit, press batch generate GPT explanations, do you want to override the explanations field? This is if you're using many different, using this for many different cards. So you can do batch generate for hundreds or thousands of cards. Uh, do you want to override it? Well, it's empty, so it doesn't matter. Uh, do you want to override the explanation field audio? Uh, yes, because it's empty. And now it will generate the explanation using ChatGPT of this word in this particular sentence. And it will also use text-to-speech to make it a audio card. So now it's done. I can deselect the flashcard or the note, select it again. And you can see there's a definition that it wrote or OpenAI wrote for us. And there's an explanation audio, which I can just play. <laughs> And I can also press preview card over here and it'll explain the word at the front. And then if I press backside only, it'll show the definition of the word, it'll show the sentence, and it will also show the pitch and, and it'll also play the actual audio that we generated of the explanation. So what this means is that when you're learning a language and you're doing something like this or using this extension in particular, you're learning words in that language using simpler words. So you're making connections between different words and you're also not subvocalizing as well. Because one of the worst things you can do when you're starting out learning a language, it's subvocalizing because subvocalizing will actually make your pronunciation in that language worse itself. So the reason I use text-to-speech is that if I were to read did this myself and be some vocalizing too early into the language learning journey and then they have a really bad foreign accent within that language and that's what you want to avoid and that's why the text speech is there because the reality is that people who learn a language mostly through reading don't reach as high of a level as people who learn through listening instead so what I did is I made mostly audio only cards where it plays the audio when it's at the front and it plays the audio at the back as well of the explanation of that word in that particular sentence. So since my flashcards are mostly audio only, it means that my listening skills are getting better and better and better, and then it will lead to a better result in the long term. You only want to improve your reading skills after your listening skills are at a really high level, just like infants do. And if you want to learn more language learning theory like that, then I would recommend checking out the community as well, because Matt in the community explains it really well. And if you want to download the add-on, then I actually shared the add-on on that community too, so you can just download it and then place it in the add-ons folder. And there's a video that goes along the side that of how you can actually download it in the community. And when you download the add-on, you can see it's completely safe and it doesn't steal your open AI keys or anything like that. And actually I made most of this add-on with AI. So about 90% of the code is written by AI. And then I just made 10% of the changes myself. And if you want to learn how to build useful tools and things for yourself using AI, then I actually started my own community as well that you can join. And it basically teaches a lot of things about how you can build with AI. Right now I have like an 11 hour class within the community about how you can make mobile apps with AI and I'll be adding more and more things over time. And if you are learning Japanese in particular, then I would highly recommend reading my post, Getting From Zero to One, Comprehensible Japanese, which is a Matt vs. Japan's Immersion Dojo community as well. Because it explains how I got from knowing almost zero Japanese to being able to understand explanations and concepts of new words that I encountered within the language itself using simpler language. But yeah, links to everything will be down in the description, so do check that out.